Now, I am very lucky. There are already valuable um, existing tools in this place to help parliamentarians. We have post, we have case, we have the library, as you've heard on the previous panel. We have the academies. But the trick is to make colleagues want to engage with those tools. Now, Naomi said that not being a scientist is no barrier to engaging with science, but that is not a message that we hear often enough. Often, as non-scientists, we feel that it's a barrier, and we feel as though we're not welcome engaging in scientific issues. But I stand here now as the new chair of the Science and Technology Select Committee, and it is my goal to make sure that non-scientists in this place feel that they are welcome to engage in science in this place, and that we get more engaging in things like the Royal Society Pairing Scheme, for example. It is a scheme which seems to many colleagues like a big time commitment. For those who don't know in this room, um, it is a scheme where a decision maker and a scientist are paired together um, and they shadow each other in their workplace for one week in each place. Now, MPs rarely do anything for more than an hour put together, if you're lucky. Um, and I have now done that pairing scheme three times in a row. I did it with Professor David Walk, a particle physicist. I did it with Professor Catherine Wood, an immunologist. And I've done it with Dr. Robert Ganair Hercock, who is BT's chief cybersecurity expert. And I have found that the time committed to that scheme has more than repaid in terms of the long-term relationships which I established with those scientists by a greater understanding of not only their working processes but also their workplaces, the need to keep the lights on for example, um, and also quite frankly the ability to just text them when there is a technical issue that I don't understand and I can't just Google in time for when I have to walk into the chamber. Um, and, of course, I'm very lucky because I do represent Oxford and I am drowning in experts, as we have already seen um, on this panel, um, where we heard from Luke at Oxitech, and I think that we should congratulate him on being nominated as the only British nominee to as European Inventor of the Year. He has made Oxford proud. Um, and also you will hear in the next panel from Professor Jocelyn Bell, who is an inspirational woman in science and who was very kind to speak at our Abingdon Science Festival. I always say that I am probably the only MP in this place who gets footnoted letters from constituents um, <laughs> lobbying on everything from, I don't know, moth migratory patterns to the need to invest in the LHC. And I joke, but I love it because it's what keeps me on my toes and it has been a resource for me throughout the whole of the last five years. And we can all mourn the fact that there are too few scientists in this place, but there are really only two ways to solve that. One is for more people like yourselves to stand for election, um, and the other is to forge ever greater bonds between this place and the scientific community. Now, Parliamentary Links Day is a beacon in that endeavour, and this year in particular, coming as it does, right at the beginning of the Parliament and before the Select Committee has formed, it's an ideal opportunity to bring proper influence to bear on the new committee's future programme and work. But if I'm honest, um, when on 10.30 last Thursday um, I heard of my election to chair, my mind did not immediately turn to the great challenges ahead. Um, I was back at the breakfast table as an eight-year-old girl with my father, who is still teaching medicine at Oxford, using my pulse rate as an excuse to once again explain to me the story of Harvey and the discovery of the circulation. Um, and it's his love of medical history which has bred in me an acute appreciation of the way in which restless scientific endeavour has shaped the world that we take for granted today. At 70, he's just had a quadruple bypass, which is something that simply wouldn't have been possible without his beloved Harvey. And he's now starting an MSc at Oxford in the history of science, where he is hoping to catalogue clinical signs and symptoms um, into the current and the historic in an effort to aid future medical students who are really struggling with information overload and out-of-date curricula. He is an inspiration to most people who meet him, I think. Um, but from a young age, what he taught me is that a vital lesson of history's great scientific stories is that artificially narrowing your field of inquiry in the name of short-term impact puts groundbreaking discovery at risk. Discoveries that can be exploited to the benefit and occasionally to the transformation of society. 
If I can misquote Lord Porter, I hope he's not in the room. Um, there are two kinds of research, exploited research and research which is not yet exploited. It's just a question of time scales.